Hi, today I'm going to talk about processes, threads and thread stack traces. So this is just to give us some background information so that we can use Process Monitor a bit more effectively. We'll start by looking at the loading of an executable. So let's just uh, open up Process Monitor. Now this trace, I traced myself opening uh, Visio by double clicking on a Visio object embedded into a PowerPoint presentation. So this is our starting point. So let's first um, filter down and uh, just pick out the Visio executable entries. So there's Visio. You can see that the process starts here and uh, even to start executing the uh, loader inside the process we need uh, a thread. So the very next thing we do is create a thread and then you can see we're now starting to access the Visio.exe uh, code and just here we load that code into memory with load image. Now uh, you also see the next entry we're loading a DLL. So this gives us quite an interesting um, area to look at. If I include all the load image events, then I double click here and look at the process information. Sorry about the uh, redaction of the user information, obviously uh, uh, I need to uh, blank that out. Um, now we've got, we can see that the down here we can see the modules that are loaded into memory for this process. And you can see right now we just have the Visio executable code. But as I, but as I step through the load image events, you can see that we're adding more code into, mapping more code into memory. So that uh, shows you how you can see what's mapped into memory in terms of DLLs. And then we can look at memory mapped files. So let's just uh, change the filter again. We'll remove the uh, load image. So one of the memory map files that gets loaded is a font cache. So let's just search for font cache. Okay, so here's the registry open for it. So actually let's, uh, we'll use the, the uh, button here just to show file activity. Sorry, let's switch it off. I'll redo that. I'll, I'll switch off the uh, registry activity. And uh, let's go looking for the font cache information again. Okay, so here we're opening the file. And uh, if we step down through here, you can see that actually here, uh, that's a uh, an attempt to map the file into memory. I don't quite know why it's failed in that way. It could be because uh, we're trying to map it um, with a certain attribute. But here we see that we successfully map the file into memory. So now that file will appear within the memory space. So that covers uh, DLLs, executables and those items that get loaded into memory. The other thing about a process is it has uh, other objects and handles attached to it. So um, one way we can look at this is if we have a look using something called Process Explorer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just double click on the uh, the Visio item so that I get Visio loaded up. You can see Visio here has started as a service, which is something I didn't realize when you uh, double click in an embedded object. Actually, what you get is Visio running as a service under an SVC host. Anyway, in here we can see handles. So this is uh, Process Explorer. I can view and set the lower pane and the lower pane actually is at the moment set to DLLs. So actually we can see these font cache, um, DLL, uh, font cache memory mapped files loaded into memory. 
if I change the view to handles I can see handles to lots of different things for example handles to files that I have open um, so I have lots of objects in here handles to registry keys that I have open all those types of things now we've seen all of these handles here so that just about covers process um, let's talk about threads a thread will execute executable code within the process and also within the kernel now that means that the thread starts executing code and it may make a call to an API which means that it starts to um, execute code in an API DLL and eventually that API DLL may switch the thread into kernel mode so it will switch from a mode called user mode into kernel mode in kernel mode the thread has far wider capabilities and uh, can do all sorts of um, inter-process activity and manipulation of um, kernel objects etc. That code is obviously highly protected, very, very well written and just because your thread is running in that mode it doesn't mean that you're running any of your own code in kernel mode. It will just be a uh, system type code. Now as the thread executes it's going to make calls so the thread might start start here by executing code it makes a call to a, a functional method called read file um, that's in another DLL we start executing the read file and that makes a, a call to something called ZW read file and so we go on because we have volatile information loaded into the CPU registers and other um, control registers etc they that information has to be protected each time we make a call so that we don't have to worry uh, in the read file function about what has been done in the previous function now the way that we protect that information is we push it onto a stack so as this call is made the system pushes the information onto a thread stack uh, and the information pertains to this actual function what's the next executable instruction in this function and it stores all of the uh, register information and the same again when we get here so if we go back to process monitor let's switch this back on just so we've got everything um, we'll go back to the top and uh, we can look at stack information here now you can see in this case because we're in the very early stages of loading up the uh, actual code we've only got one user mode entry and everything else is kernel mode so this is where we're actually starting up the whole process and loading images etc if we come further down in the trace to an area like this and we look at the stack entry here you can see that there's a great deal of execution in user mode of uh, Visio code, Visio DLLs then we get into the user API interface of uh, Windows still all running in user mode so we see a lot lots of this type of activity and then eventually just here when we're executing code in here we must make a call that causes us to switch into kernel mode so that's how we can see how we can track the execution of code you don't see every single instruction what you're seeing is every single function call um, and, and by inference then that pushes information onto the stack and that's why we're seeing it in the stack trace Okay, unfortunately I've run out of time again, it goes so quickly, but uh, I hope that helps and I'll see you soon.